I'm Sarah Wheatley um, from the British Virgin Islands, currently studying at LSE, and today I was the Master of Ceremonies. So far we've learned about um, our history, our heritage, and what really connects us in terms of British history, uh, etc. Uh, we've also been told about the implications of Brexit, what our relationship really is with the EU, and what our future relationship with the UK would or should be. Uh, we've also, interestingly enough, talked about our narrative, how important this is in dictating our future relationships with um, the UK and other external uh, entities. Good evening, can you tell us your name? Hi, I'm Nardania Stewart and I'm from the Cayman Islands. Awesome, and what do you study? Um, I'm a recent graduate of the University of Greenwich where I study public relations and communications. Wonderful, wonderful. And can you tell us uh, your favorite part of the evening today? Um, I've enjoyed all aspects of the evening, but especially hearing more about Brexit and how it's going to affect the overseas territories directly. Thank you. Um, I think the purpose of today basically is to like make the students from the overseas territory like give them more information as to what is going to happen in the next few years, probably the next few months, because we are going to be affected by this whole Brexit thing, even though we and we may not live in the UK, some of us may not live in the UK, or may not plan to live here for the next few years, but it will certainly affect us. Basically because, um, like she was saying, um, we're coming here basically for school or whatever. They have certain things that would be affected by it, such as like, <laughs> traveling, how, how we would get here, or, um, Passport. or passports. Um, we wouldn't be able to freely move the same thing that he was saying with the single market. So, and for us who also um, don't use the pound as all currency. currency, we have to look at exchange rates because where we were part of the EU, the EU they kind of regulated a bit more of what the pound rate would have been when now it could go anywhere. So it's like, it's going to affect us in so many different ways. So I just feel like it's something that we need to kind of think about and kind of try to find some kind of unity as overseas citizens because I don't think the UK on a whole was thinking about the Rest smaller us, yeah. islands yeah. when they made these decisions. Yeah. <laughs> so selfish. selfish. <laughs> uh, good afternoon, can we have your name please? Renate Hines. And what territory are you from? Turks and Caicos Islands. And what do you study? Health Sciences at the University of Roehampton. Nice, nice. And uh, lastly, what was your favorite part of the evening? My favorite part of today was when Mr. Robert Blythe gave his um, his presentation on the different territories and what the population's hits and misses, um, the historical um, information given about um, their maritime history. Um, I love anything now that talks about maritime because um, a lot of that history we don't know about. Um, a lot of that history has kind of been either disregarded or lost and so learning about it from the British perspective for me I think is very timely at this at this point where we look at ourselves as um, kind of daughters and sons of the <laughs> you know of the um, UK and also where Brexit is approaching we really need to see how it could affect us and how we share the history with other overseas territories. All right thank you very much. Later this afternoon we have um, a library session in which we look at artifacts with the territories and dive uh, deeper into what really connects us. Uh, we also have different gallery tours related to our maritime history and then I think we end it all with other tours and the pub crawl. My name is Natasha Brown and I'm from Mons. Okay. Um, so were there any artifacts in particular that piqued your interest? Yes. 
the map with the tap the different territories that has color codes like mm. pink for British and yellow for Spanish and Dutch that one so yeah. that's my yeah, that one was really cool. So, like, what about it in particular um, interests you about that object? Well, I guess in those days, color color meant something. So, you know, if you were going to say a particular group of countries, it was easy to identify. Um, so, for instance, the British country, the Dutch, the French, and so on. Yeah, yeah. I guess it is easier to navigate and identify with that. Um, so, in your opinion, are there any similarities or differences that you can identify between the OTs from these objects? So, did these objects show you any similarities between the territories or any differences between the territories? Well, all the OTs have the same color on the map. From well, yeah, yeah, there you go. That's yeah, relevant. Yeah. So, yeah. Um, most of, based on what uh, we will see, you know, there is some. Um, Buildings like um, oh, like the fort, like the, the fort? fort, the fort, yeah, is almost in all of the territories where you know, mm. would have had British, yeah, that's true, I guess, because like you know, you have to protect the territory. Because I think this, this Cayman or one of those territories, which he's showing that the buildings still remain from. From ever since, so they would have done some preservation work. Oh, okay. I think that was BVI, if I'm not mistaken. I believe, but yeah. And um, so, what does it mean to you to have this shared maritime heritage with these other countries? Well, it's to see that history is still alive, and you know, somebody is actually documenting what has happened in 1915. Because to know, to know. I can come here to something from 1915. It's very good. Mm -hmm. I mean, for our children and our grandchildren, you know, to know what happened in those days is very interesting. Yeah, agreed. And then, lastly, um, so from what you've seen here today, um, are there any direct connections between the OTs in present time and the OTs of the past? Like based on these artifacts, like, do you see anything that's probably changed or remained the same between these past and present countries? Well, I think the Otis they had a connection then, and there is still a strong connection, like um, BVI and Angola. The south of some, south of matching, still is. Hmm. Monset and Angola still have. Like ties, some sort of ties. I mean, maybe family, like, say, for instance, a particular last name may exist in one territory. Mm. Yeah, and maybe that's something that we'd be able to find out more about in like these um, ship logs or something. Yeah, you can find those. Um, the evidence in these artifacts. Good afternoon. Uh, can you tell us your name, please? Good afternoon. My name is Michael Brangman. I'm All from right. Bermuda. Oh, awesome. And um, what do you study? I study accounting and finance at and the University of East London. Wonderful. And uh, lastly, could you tell us what was your favorite part of this evening? Uh, my favorite part about the evening was hearing uh, the different perspectives from the other overseas territories about the issues facing them and the possible impact of Brexit on them. Wonderful. Oh, thank you. For Good evening. Oh, can you tell us your name, please? Uh, my name's Christine. I'm from the Falkland Islands and I'm studying law in Birmingham. Wonderful. And at what university? The University of Law. Wonderful. And what was your favourite part of this evening? I think one of the favourite things for me was seeing other OTs look at how they can construct their own narrative for the future. Um, I have a background in communications and PR and actually seeing people realise that as territories of the overseas um, as citizens of the overseas territories, we can control our own stories and we can do that with a phone in our pocket. And Wonderful. we have the power to do that. It was really great for me. Just for, your, for the record, could you just state your name and your territory? Um, Roman Simon from Dirt City. Okay, thank you, Roman. Um, so, was there an artifact in particular that stood out to you? Um, I like the, the diary by James. What it was Brad, James Brad. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah. And what made that object um, catch your eye? Um, when I was reading it just now, like the adventure that he was having sounded interesting. Yeah, and it's cool to have like that first hand account, you know? Yeah. It's almost like you're there. Um, 
So, in your opinion, are there any similarities or differences that you can identify between the OTs and the, from the objects? Um, well, I mean, from the maps of the, I think it was the, the islands over there. Okay. They all like have show what they trade and stuff. So like all I, I see that all the islands trade to different people. Mm -hmm. And probably and trade different things as well. But then so I guess they share the fact that they all trade. But then the difference would be what is being traded. Yeah. Okay. And um, so from what you've seen here today, do you see any direct connection between OTs of the present time and OTs of the past? I don't think so. <laughs> no, I mean, I, I guess they've, like, you know, changed and developed over time, but I guess also to a degree, would you agree that they kind of stayed the same? Yeah, like, I, would, I would agree that. Yeah. Cool. And lastly, what does it mean to you to have a shared maritime heritage with these other countries? Um, I think to me, it'd be like, it'd be a good thing if we was to do that because sharing with the other countries would have us to allow us to have a better understanding of each other. Yeah. Well, we currently do share this maritime history because we're all over these territories. We're all islands, you know, surrounded by water. We have like huge like um, seafaring history. Um, do you feel any certain connection to people from other OTs because we already share this naturally, even though we're from different countries, but we're all tied to the fact that we're British, that we're surrounded by water, <laughs> uh, or not? You feel no? no? Fair enough. Fair enough. Good afternoon. Can you tell us your name, please? My name is Aja Rippey and I'm from the Turks and Caicos Islands. Awesome. And uh, what do you study? I study business at the City of Westminster. Right. And how is, that, how is it going so far? It's going good. A lot of coursework. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, so right now we're here in the library. Um, is there anything that caught your attention? Yes, um, the book of um, the book which contains remedies and how to cure diseases that caught my attention today because it's really interesting how they can cure certain diseases back in the day with just natural remedies. Today you have more chemi chemical medication that you use for the these diseases like depression and right. so on and so forth. All right, and um, lastly, what was your favorite uh, part of today's event? My favorite part of today's event is when we get to meet the, the different British overseas territories and the British Virgin Islands. You get to <laughs> you get to know more about um, your maritime history with them because obviously some people won't know certain islands exist, like the Falcon Islands. I never knew they existed, and how. And another favorite part of mine is really get into be knowledgeable of how post Brexit can affect the British I mean Virgin Islands and the British overseas territories. Cause some might think it might not affect us, but really and truly there are some islands that will be major affected by it. That's very true. So to start, could you just say your name and your territory so I can have that for the quote? Yeah, uh, Chloe Anderson uh, from the Falkland Islands. Cool. Um, so Chloe, what, were there any artifacts in particular that piqued your interest from what we saw? Um, so of course, the one with the Falklands is quite um, very interesting. Um, I quite enjoyed looking at the medical dictionary because I've heard quite a lot of stories about that. Mm -hmm. So what made um, that object in particular, like, or these two objects, the medical dictionary and the one from the Falkland Islands, what made these two stand out to you most? Um, well, the Falklands one obviously because I've got personal interest and, yeah, it's quite an, an emotional subject mm -hmm. um, and it's because of my family being involved and everything, so. Oh, okay. But with the medical dictionary, that's just the general historical interest. Yeah. I've heard a lot about that story and so I'd be quite interested to, you know, read more and have a look at something that was actually used. Yeah. 
that's pretty cool that's fascinating that you say that like your family was involved so you actually know yeah. of like family members that weren't involved um, yeah my, my, my parents were in the uh, before my dad was um, in the stand they, they were confined to their houses yeah. and then in the, in the evening my dad would go out with a few others and sabotage the Argentine tanks that were oh. going along so and of course they could hear all this action and on, on the radio they'd hear about you know the, the ships and being destroyed the bombs and things, so, so it's very interesting. Yeah, very cool for home. Um, so in your opinion, are there any similarities or differences that you can identify between the OTs from these objects? Um, yeah, that's a good question. Um, it's interesting to see what a, you know, a wide maritime history that everyone has. Um, Especially seeing how far some of the objects date back to, you know, it's, it's quite surprising when I actually think about it. Yeah. Um, so that's it's the thing that really jumps out. Thank you. And uh, um, touching on maritime heritage, what does it mean to you to have a shared maritime heritage with these other um, territories? I think it's really it's really important to have that, and it's really interesting to find out how closely we are connected mm-hmm. to the one, because obviously being quite isolated sometimes in the territories, you don't really think about the others, so it's nice to know. Yeah, that's true, because I, I don't know much, you know, uh, like saying about the it's Falkland Islands, I don't really know that much. I really want to the Islands, like, the social board and speak Twitter. Um, and lastly, from what you've seen today, do you see any direct connection between the OTs of today and the OTs from the past? Um, the identities are the same. So I, I feel like everyone is so like involved in their past, so yeah. they've sort of brought that identity, that identity through their passion and their you know, so I guess it doesn't necessarily like change so much between then and now. It's more so it, yeah. it just evolved. And, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And even just talking about their history, like they seem really passionate about it and, mm-hmm. and passionate to learn about it as well. And everyone's really proud of their country yeah, too. Exactly. Yeah. yeah, exactly. Good afternoon. Can you tell us your name? Hi, I'm Serene Pickering. All right. And uh, where are you from? Um, the British Virgin Islands. Wonderful. And what do you study? Um, I studied a bachelor's in criminology and sociology, and I graduated July 2016. And where was this? At Keele University. Wonderful. And uh, so we're right now in the library. What caught your attention today? Um, it was just the fact that all these artifacts were actually documented and you could actually look at the history from like the 1700s or the 1600s and actually be able to identify the places. Um, I'm from the Virgin Islands, as I said before, and there's a map that details the Virgin Islands and it includes Puerto Rico and the US. Virgin Islands and Anguilla, but then there's also a map that details Tortola that separates the island by plantation. And ironically enough, there are the the the, who, the plantation owners and their names. Like ironically enough, the people that have those last names are currently still living within around the same area to this very day. And that map was said to be constructed in 17 in the 1700s sometime, like mid-1700s. So it's 20, 2017 and we're still living in basically the same place. It's very interesting to see how, in- how history impacts us and how much of it lingers without us not even knowing. Yeah. Right. It's good to see um, young people like myself taking an interest in you know the things <laughs> we have is, provided to us. Yeah, because we learn a lot from history and I think a lot of people don't realize like history is always seen as the boring thing but it's not actually boring because you learn so much from it like and it impacts you so much. like without knowing subconsciously impacts it affects the way you think it affects the way you act because we all learn from history at some point in time very true and um lastly uh what was your favorite uh point in the evening um my favorite session would probably be the brexit um it it just helped to clarify or well bring to light the the things that affect overseas territories and what might be the possible way to go about dealing with it. I think that um, MPs and like other ministers of parliament in the UK should probably consider overseas territories before making decisions and actually get to hear from what the, we the overseas territories would like to have happen in our island because although we're not independent, 
we do kind of self-govern and it would be nice to not just have something implemented but be able to give an uh, a suggestion or like something that would actually benefit the overseas territory but it's really good to see what will happen because we're hoping for like a very prosperous and like very beneficial brexit but we can only really wait and see what happens very um understandable all right thank you for your time have a good day thank you.